So guys, here we are ready to talk about my newest mo Wait a minute, f it, I'm not strapped into this chair. Hey, can somebody else answer that? Knock at the Cabin is the newest film written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, truly one of the most polarizing risk takers to ever step foot in Hollywood. And he's assembled a great cast of talent for this one, and they're anchored by the one and only Dave Bautista, former heavyweight champion of the world, of course, turned actor, and he is making quite a name for himself, isn't he? While vacationing at a remote cabin in the woods, which is a great setting for a scary movie, we follow a young girl and her parents, played by Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge, as they are taken hostage by four armed strangers whose leader is played by Dave Bautista, and these strangers demand they make an unthinkable choice to avert the apocalypse. And seeing as how this is a spoiler-free review, I'm not gonna get into whatever choice that is. Now, some people might sit through Knock at the Cabin and they may think, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here that feels very easy and very coincidental. But that's exactly what M. Night Shyamalan wants you to think with this writing. And that's what I think makes Knock at the Cabin so unsettling amongst so many other things, guys. Um, I freaking loved this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't believe I'm saying that. Especially after the disappointment of old last year, which is still admittedly a very fun movie. But I was really, really hoping that that would take M. Night Shyamalan out of the slump that he'd been in. And yeah, this guy did have Split to his name, but he wasn't putting out consistent, excellent movies like he was at the beginning of his career. Look back as you turn the clock into the new millennium. The Sixth Sense... Unbreakable, and Signs. Those are three instant classic movies, and I reviewed every single one of Shyamalan's movies here on the channel in the build-up to old a couple of years ago. So if you've been with me for a long time, you know that I'm always pulling for this guy, even though some of his projects don't always hit the ceiling, like After Earth and the f***ing Last Airbender just being abominations on cinema. And then he insults your intelligence with movies like Lady in the Water. But despite his up-and-down track record, I can't help but respect the man. Because if a studio gives him and an idea that he has enough money, he's going to run with it and he's going to try and swing for the fences any way he can. Knock at the Cabin isn't just a home run. I think he hits a grand slam with this thing. Across the board, the actors that he got do a phenomenal job, especially Dave Bautista, who I'm so happy to say turns in the best work of his entire career. He plays a man named Leonard who, despite his hulking stature, offers a lot of gentle guidance. Even though a lot of the he's saying in this movie appear extremely delusional on the surface. There's just so many damn layers that peel back, and Dave Bautista is exploring every fiber of this guy. I absolutely loved seeing this guy get character work, unlike the comic relief in Guardians of the Galaxy, even though I do love seeing him in those movies. And I especially loved seeing him not get typecast as this hulking brute that Daniel Craig gets to beat up. He was outstanding. This is easily his career best work. As is the case with any Shyamalan movie, who tends to bring the best out of all of his actors. Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge I would also put on that list. Those two guys together are so incredible. I've loved Jonathan Groff for a long time, ever since he originated the role of Melchior in Spring Awakening. This might be his best work since Spring Awakening, which honestly might be a bit of an asterisk since that's a stage production and that's a whole different animal. But technically, in terms of the film medium, yeah, this is Jonathan Groff's best. Ben Aldridge is someone who's been in a few smaller movies. He starred alongside Jim Parsons in Spoiler Alert last year. Nikki Amuka Bird as Sabrina is so, so sweet in this movie. Super Super unsettling every single time you see her pop into frame. It's easy to see why Shyamalan picked her for this part, especially after collaborating with her on Old. Brilliant performances from her. Abby Quinn is a really quirky character with a very sweet backstory. Kristen Cooey follows in the footsteps of Haley Joel Osment, Spencer Treat Clark, and Abigail Breslin. An excellent child performance in a Shyamalan movie. Her and her two parents together all make up the emotional crux of this movie. And especially as you get towards the finale, like, I was on the edge of my seat. I was really, really hoping that these three would make it out of this situation okay. Which is something I haven't felt in a Shyamalan movie in a really long time. While I'm on that topic, the ending of this movie as well. 
man, it just tugs at your heartstrings without getting too deep into spoilers, of course, but you just have to see it to really feel the waterworks coming. There's one actor I've left out up to this point. It's been a long time since I've seen him in a new movie, at least a decade. Rupert freaking Grint, where have you been? A lot of his people might consider this performance one note because he portrays this guy Redmond with so much malice and so much hatred in a perfect American accent from him. But this is my message to directors everywhere. I know you love Daniel Radcliffe, and I know you love Emma Watson, but give some love to Rupert Grint, why don't you? Because he was outstanding in this movie, and he continues to prove that he is a diamond in the rough. And Shyamalan is getting the best out of his actors because his direction is hearkening back to his original three classics that made him a genius. Super long takes that really focus on the emotions that are at the forefront. And while I'm on the subject of camera work, man... This cinematography is just beautiful, which for a contained thriller is especially impressive. He has once again switched cinematographers to Jaron Blaschka, who actually is a frequent collaborator with Robert Eggers. This is the cinematographer for The Witch and The Lighthouse, the latter of which he got nominated for an Academy Award for. And I know that the 95th Oscars haven't even happened yet, I can certainly see this guy getting nominated at the 96th Oscars in Best Cinematography. Because that combined with Shyamalan's direction, and the fact that a bunch of this movie takes place in broad daylight, and the fact that we can still maximize the tension as much as it was, that's pretty damn impressive. And the musical score as well. Intense when it needs to be, but also provides glimmers of hope when it has to. It's a perfect blend, and I'd love to see this composer get more work. And I'm just going to leave his name right there, just because I do not want to butcher it on camera. But please, give him more work as well. I really don't have a whole lot to complain about with Knock at the Cabin. I was riveted from scene one. I was pretty concerned when I saw the first scene and all the canted angles that Shyamalan was using on two of his central characters. And I thought I was going to be really, really annoyed at the direction throughout and that Shyamalan was just going to go back into his old habits. But this movie was super enthralling. It's one of the better thrillers I think you're probably going to see once it's all said and done in 2023. And damn me if you think this is a hot take. I think Knock at the Cabin is M. Night Shyamalan's best movie since Signs. Which, if you're doing the math, that's his best movie since 2002. Came out over 20 years ago. Just proof that if you give him the right project and you don't miscast him and have him direct a movie like The Last Airbender, he can put out something really special. And this is a movie that he and all this cast should be proud of. Dave Bautista put in the best work of his entire career, as did Jonathan Groff. Please give Rupert Grint more work as well. Like, is that too much to ask? I do have one pretty big nitpick with Knock at the Cabin, and it's unfortunately a big one. As you get towards the third act and a big, crazy-ass finale, M. Night Shyamalan does tend to go into his overwriting habit where he will explain the plot twist, which I dare not give away here, but it's pretty friggin' obvious if you've read the novel that this was based on and if you saw the trailer. And the predictability of this movie might turn a lot of people off from it, but here's what I think. Predictability doesn't necessarily mean bad, as long as the meat of this movie and what the talent is throwing into it is executed well, predictability can be just fine by me. And as long as you get to that predictable ending and you were emotionally invested like I was, there's nothing wrong with it. In case you couldn't tell, I adore Knock at the Cabin and I highly encourage you guys check this one out this weekend. I'm gonna say it again, this movie is Shyamalan's best since Signs. I'm gonna give Knock at the Cabin an A-. minus. Please go and support this one in the movie theaters, guys. It's certainly not to be missed. This is just one guy's opinion, of course. Let me know what you thought of Knock at the Cabin down in the comments section below. What is your favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie so far? How would you rank them? Guys, obviously, I love discussing movies and all things entertainment. And if you guys enjoy discussing these topics, this channel is the place to be. So please do consider becoming a subscriber. It's absolutely free and you can always change your mind later. Feel free to tap on that notification bell as well. That way you don't miss a second more of the action. And guys, do me a big solid and smash that like button. This only helps continue to grow this amazing community that we've already built together. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews coming to the channel very, very soon. Y'all are the best. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.